Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with a 2v2 for you today on the map Campbell's Convoy. I really like this match because on top of all the action, the game goes really late. And so it's good at demonstrating how the different factions can set up and play the late game. It's also a good reminder of to never, ever give up until that last VP is gone. Playing as the Axis, we got Salas from Germany. Uh, playing as the Wehrmacht, rank number 880. He's using the Breakthrough Battle Group. His teammate Travolka from Finland is ranked number 39 with the DAC, and he uses the Armored Support Battle Group. Then on the Allies, we have John C. Ponce coming from Finland, ranked number 605 with the Brits, playing the Air and Sea Battle Group. And then his teammate Dalian from Norway, playing as the Americans, ranked 440, using the Special Operations Battle Group. Casting this one with me is Garrett from the channel Turtle War. Uh, really need his help on this one with all the action going on, so appreciate him for stopping by. Uh, I'll drop a link to his channel in the description below. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and with that, we'll roll on to the match. Hey everyone, so we're here. Uh, I got Garrett, Turtle Boy, with me, and uh, so we were talking about this on the way in, but John Steepons apparently likes to put a, have a lot of snarky comments on your videos, uh, so I imagine you're going to watch his play very closely, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to pay very close attention attention to how much uh, munitions John Stee floats. <laughs> Well, so we've got Travolka uh, playing as the DAC. Uh, he's in purple here, and he's going to immediately get a crotch hits and out, and then a Panzer Grenadier. Um, and then his teammate, Salas, who's, who's red, uh, has the Pioneers out, and he's immediately getting a sniper, interestingly enough. Uh, meanwhile, on the Allied side, we got Dalian locking in Special Operations, getting a Weasel immediately, uh, as well as the Scouts and his rifles. And then uh, John Stee playing the Brits. Uh, with two sapper squads on the way out and travolka using the crotch hits in here to immediately challenge uh the fuel point which is a, a great start for the axis on this map I, I think that's one of the best things they can do is put that early pressure right on that fuel point oh man and this crotch hits is burning down those scouts so dingo here to counter the crotch hits in. and if the crotch hits doesn't get out of there that dingo will beat it up yeah Shooting is toast, and now the Axis players have to be very careful because the Sniper also is at high risk of going down to this Dingo. Panzer Grenadier is in cover, um, occasionally penetrating the Dingo's frontal armor. Yeah, Salas didn't see these before he made the Sniper, but getting a Sniper on the field with both a Dingo and a Weasel, it's a little dangerous. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we had John Steed go armored to get the veteran C, because the dingo's already vet one. Here we go, sniper chipping away at the sapper. Dingo calling in artillery to prevent the machine gun from setting up. Another crotch hits an out immediately for Travolta. So he, I think he's prioritizing that capping power. The sniper uh, helping these pioneers take care of the sappers. Oh, sapper squad Man. down. And the Dingo looking to chase, but the Sniper retreats ahead of time. Now MG42 coming in. We'll see how it works with the uh, the Dingo. Dingo's going to back up. Smart. Some very good micro so far from both players on their light vehicles. Man, this crowd shoots and burn down again. Uh, very low HP. Rifles challenge Panzer Pioneers on the, uh, the southern VP here. I play with uh, both Dalian and John Steve pretty frequently, and I can tell you they're they're very good players. Uh, when I play with them, I can take it easy and let them do the heavy lifting. So <laughs> this will be nice to see. Mates. Yeah, see what they do on their end. Yeah. Oh no, Weasel goes down to a mine. So well placed mine by Travolka over here, and the Panzer Piney is rewarded with some veterancy. Meanwhile, rifles squaring off of Panzer Grenadiers. MG42 is getting flanked by the dingo in the north side. He's getting chopped down. Yeah. Oh, man. He's going to... He'll get out of there with that retreat. So I wanted to point this out here. So the rifles are in green cover, and the Panzer Grenadiers were not. But the point-blank mechanic means that the Panzer Grenadiers are still doing full damage to those rifles, but the rifles being in cover protected them from the crowd shoots since more long-range engagements. So here you see Panzer Grenadiers doing a lot of damage to their rifles, despite the fact that they're not in cover. And rifles forced to retreat. Sappers is still pushing another on that Another Sapper squad was very close to getting finished off by a sniper again. Yeah. 
I wonder, the Grenadiers are setting up for a Panzerfaust, but I don't think they have the tech for it. Oh, Sniper at risk here. Oh, he could get it off. Oh, man. Oh, the Panzer Pioneers and base MGs are going to defend. <clears throat> oh, Gren Squad, very damaged, but <clears throat> the Dingo also uh, really beat up, so it's not going to pursue. Now the ally is about to get a triple cap on here. Panzer Grenadiers versus Scouts. The scouts are actually going to win this engagement. Panzer Grenadiers forced to retreat. So the DAC set up. He's going for fire support elements. Very, very light build early. And so he's got. He's going for armored support. And he's gotten the uh, penetration boost. He has a lot of manpower that he's floating. So I wonder what his approach is going to be here. It's obviously not going 8 rod if he's going to fire support elements. Losing that crowd early definitely took a toll on his force. That 200 manpower that yeah. he had to reuse again immediately. That's yeah. rough. MG42 not going to prevent the infantry section from capping that fuel. So allies with good early fuel control. Another weasel out now. Going to push off the crowd shoots in. Dingo calling in artillery, so good team play here. The artillery is going to come in behind the uh, DAC infantry. Dingo is going to go for the crowd shoots, and I think. Oh man! Oh, crowd back into a corner. Yeah, he's cornered. Oh, now a snare on the Dingo. Still going to get the kill on the crowd shoots, and Panzer Pioneers. Oh, they're going to go down here at range. Have to. No, they get away. Wow. Wide wide ranging engagement here. Allies doubling down. Dingo's gonna survive. Sapper's pushing up Panzer Grenadiers. Meanwhile, the axes cap up the center. There's the sniper pushing up with Grenadier and MG42 support. But the, the 2v1 here by the allies in the south allows them to hold on to this uh victory point and retake the heavy fuel or the heavy munitions. And it not only lets him do that, but he keeps the dingo alive, which is crucial. You gotta minimize losses, especially at this point in the game. Still six minutes very early on. Yeah, he's killed two Krodschitzen now. Uh, Panzer Jaeger's out for Travolka. They're still in the half track here. Uh, using the half track for healing. Smart. In the base. And then a uh, flak for lane coming out. Meanwhile, several mines going down for Salas. He's got a number queued up. I like this. He's going to try to punish vehicles pursuing this sniper. This makes a lot of sense. Oh, Sapper's fortunately pinned. The sniper's going to take some, some pot shots here. Now the DAC vehicle's coming out. Trying to suppress the rifles to keep them from getting after the sniper. And Johnsty actually, he went A, R, and C. I never even noticed. He's so, calling in what looks like a LMG commandos right now. Nice. Yeah, commando LMG section. They will be able to do a lot of damage to the sniper range. Oh, that grenade's going to hurt. Oh, man. I think saved by the fact that the machine gun counts as a model and so uh, prevents the grenade's damage cap from killing the entire MG uh, team. Yep, LMG commandos, and they're, right now, they're camouflaged. Mortar round does a lot of damage to the flak for Lang. Panzer Grenadier is going to immediately repair it. And just like that, the Axis have taken over the center of the field. Panzer Jaegers are here. Oh, man. Oh, and that weasel smoked. Weasel. Yeah, Panzer Jaegers plus the half track, just too much for the weasel to deal with. Dalian doing lots, a good job capping on the flank here with these rifles. What were you lots saying? Lots of light vehicle trades so far, and they've all been their capping power. You know, vehicles, two crads, two weasels. So they're both kind of limited now in capping power. Yeah, now Dalian floating quite a bit of manpower here. And he's got uh, two half tracks out now. Oh no, I guess they're the same. The overlay is just showing me a little bit of a misclick there. Travolka coming out, pushing with the half track. 
and a flak for Lang. Infantry and support. 75 mil uh, half track for Dolly coming out, bombarding these Panzer Grenadiers in cover. Wow, Stoss trooping out already for Salas. Wow. So good. Pretty significant fuel control with that. Uh, that was a quick tech up. Nine minutes to tier four and Stoss trooping. Oh. Dingo goes down in the north to a Faust combined with a Pack 40. Yeah. The sniper doing a good job bleeding these Brits here. Oh, I think. Let's see. For Salus. Yeah, it was the mechanized assault group. Okay. So he doesn't have tier four out yet. He called in the Stoss Troopman with the half track. So, my mistake there. Sauce Troopman challenging Elmi Commandos, and the sniper going to do a lot. If they're not oh, careful, man. the sniper's going to knock them out. Oh, they retreat just in time. Boys AT rifles knock down the health on the half track here. The sniper uh, helping whittle them down. Sauce Troopman and Captain VP. What's that? Flag track taken out by a uh, six pounder in mid. Man, lots of vehicle trades. <clears throat> now a mortar out for Johnsty. And he's building his tier four now. We have vehicles ready to be deployed. After allies took both those middle fuels and then lost them, I don't think they've been able to regain the their own fuel for uh, quite a while now, it feels like. Yeah, it's at least it's not capped by the Axis neutral and with the air and sea battle group uh john c can at least use the naval blockade to prevent the access from capping it he's a sniper creeping up looks like he's gonna go for this mortar team already vet too oh man yeah that thing's gonna haunt him all game yeah dolly and pushing out here Travolka making good use of the fuel salvage ability. And BAR is upgraded. They're going to do a lot of damage to this half track. And here comes the sticky bomb. So that 250 is done now as well. Now here comes a new flak for laying. And honestly, I, I like this play. The suppression is really useful when you're dealing with a lot of USF or allied infantry. Commando is coming to support the captain. Uh, yeah, Com Captain Forcer retreat just standing in the open. Oh, Panzer Grenadier is at risk of going down. They're soft retreating. And it looks like they're going to get away. The flak furling is going to suppress these commandos. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the map, LMG commando is suppressed by the MG42 and taking a lot of damage here, but they did force the sniper to retreat. They got the, cat the decap off, which is good. Yep, and Dolly and got get control those of Alex. Oh, well, that one LMG commando will get away. AT gun in the rear, focus on the half track, but the half track will back up as well. An MG has been Do not let it oh wow! Enemy hands. The Grenadiers are immediately going to pick up that MG42 after I got knocked out. All right, so now we're seeing the, the mechanized company come out for Travolka. So I, I'm i interested to see what his approach is here. Maybe uh, going for some martyrs? That That's unusual. I, I would have expected him to go tier four, maybe go armored reserves. I'm starting to wonder, Johnsty has gotten out a uh, company command post and he just finished a crusader. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if at this point, do you need something more? Do you need more team weapons or do you need a bishop? It seems like they're lacking a little bit on artillery. They have two mortars between the two of them, but nothing, uh, nothing to dislodge this oh, Axis force. Oh, Stoss Troop can get annihilated by the crusader. I, I like the crusader right now. There's not a lot of AT on the field. Oh, he's going for the recon tractor, Travolka is. Uh, there's one AT gun on either side of the map. The Crusader's fast enough to deal with that. 
Um, I think like next I will probably see, you know, Matilda or Grant, something that can take a couple more hits and kind of chunk down. The enemy has taken a victory point. Now we see Dalian focusing on this VP here and Travolta countering. Grenade comes in on the rifle squad. Oh, they take a lot of damage trying to cap that VP. Commando is on flank with the bazookas out, going for the flak for Lang. Crusader has been engine critted. First shot for the commandos whiffs. But uh, John C does knock out the 251, and then immediately Salas trades and knocks out the Crusader. So lots of vehicles knocked out in this game. And really to no one's advantage, to be honest. You know, normally the, the advantage to vehicle heavy play, if you keep them alive, is that you don't lose the manpower from having a lot of infantry get killed. And so you can snowball into advantages, especially for the DAC, who need the manpower for their armory upgrades. Recontract out on the field. Now, I think this is going to be the Axis' answer. Some additional artillery to dislodge some of these team weapons. Alright, Stoss Troop and hit the field again. This time from the tier 4. And not the call-in. Ooh. Grenadiers take a lot of damage from the mortar, but managed to decap the center. BP is very even right now. We have lost the sector. MG42 moving up to cover the middle v VP. He's going to suppress. And that's the recontractor artillery. So between MG42 and the recontractor, axes are prevent the cap at the center. And they've got pioneers capping in the north. Lots of mines laid down by both sides here. All right, Dolly making a big push to preserve his fuel. A P4 hits the field. Oh man, another flashing just smoked. Great teamwork. They both pulled their AT guns up at the same time. He didn't have a chance to react to the first AT shot and get out of there. Yeah, Air Force Mortar Barrage doing a ton of damage to the Panzer Grenadiers. And then this push, the rifles and the commandos might not get the wipe on these Panzer Grenadiers, but they are going to do a lot of damage. Dalian continuing to push. He's going to try to secure this southern VP. Meanwhile, Stoss Troop and his sniper in the center. Supported by Panzer IV. If John C isn't careful, he could get pushed back hard. But he does have a Matilda out on the field now. Matilda is not going to reliably penetrate the P4, but neither will the P4 reliably penetrate the Matilda. Oh, this mortar team is at risk of going down here. But it'll get away. And now, here comes the Matilda. It's in a good position to really punish these Axis infantry. Trading, trades a couple shots with the P4. Panzerfaust comes in, but only does a crew shock. Pack 40 on the back, but the first shot bounces. P4 shot bounces as well. Matilda's heavy armor really holding up. Oh man, it just eats those. Yeah. And now here you have another flak filling in the recontractor. The Stoss troop in. Kill the double vet rifle squad. So really interesting. Really a two versus two engagement here in the center. Pack 40 and Pack 38 moving up. Matilda forced to trigger its smoke to prevent it from being knocked out by the AT guns. Sniper a little too close forward. He may get hit here. These LMG oh, commandos. He's there he goes. Yeah, I was going to say, they're in the right position to do a lot of damage to that sniper. And so both sides end up resetting here. Really, really good broad engagement there. Uh, Matilda needs a lot of repair work, but the sappers are on it. LMG commandos in cover against MG42. Nobody's playing too defensive. Nobody's playing too aggressive. They're both very balanced play styles. Yeah, and I, I wonder what the end game strategy is here. I mean, for the Brits, the heavy armor is really important. And then I think you rely on, if I'm the allies, you rely on Dalian to kind of spearhead your pushes with the commandos and the rifle squad. And then you use the British armor, kind of like a ratchet strap, to tighten down and preserve your gains. Uh, and just slowly kind of attrit the axis. 
Here comes the flak for lane. Gotta keep an eye out for these AT guns. Oh, but the recon tractor is allowing him to see through the fog of war, so he's prepared when the AT guns push up. Now, Penzer Grenadier is going to move up on this six-pounder. Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous with the lack of AT on the field, because now Axis is starting to get a handful of tanks and light vehicles on the field that can quickly overrun. Yeah, Travolka went for a martyr here, which makes a lot of sense. It should, especially with the armory upgrades, reliably penetrate that Matilda. Ooh, a T gun on the flank. Black Rilling will survive. And is at risk of going down there. Here comes the AT gun against the Matilda. Martyr still not quite in position. Black Rilling has to back up because the Matilda hits it. Uh, it will die. Now Sal is getting a naval warfare out. Stoss trooping in a good spot. Do a lot of damage to LMG commandos, but don't finish it off. Mortar. Oh, yeah. Wisely retreats the Stoss trooping. One good Matilda shot could have wiped out that whole squad. They're on such low health. Now the Pack 40 camouflage, supported by the P4. Travolka now going for his tier 4, as is Dalian. Whizbang unlocked. John Steve's gotten out his second Matilda and is also building a squad of foot guards. That's, oh man, they really start to snowball there. Here, Nabel comes in on the center VP. Dalian going for the upgraded rockets for his bazookas as well, which really makes sense now that he's got a couple squads of commandos on the field. Oh, look at the RNG from that Nabel for shot hitting the commandos dead on. I didn't want to say anything to spoil it earlier, but if I know Dalian, he's getting a whiz bang out. And when you said he unlocked it just a few minutes ago, I think it's uh, we'll probably see it soon. Oh, I love that. I, I, <laughs> I love the whiz bang, man. It just makes it warms my soul. Uh, Martyr chunking away at the Matilda here. Yeah, good shots. The Matilda forced to back up. But this is smart. So John C's got his second Matilda up on the north, supported with a couple of infantry sections. And so the Axis don't have the flexibility to be in two places at once right now. So I think the allies are gonna retake the north. P4 in the center. Man, these, uh, these foot guards, really dangerous lately, especially after the SMG damage upgrade. And once they start to get veterancy, they become really difficult to deal with. They're so, so useful in the late game. That vet ability, just now being even tougher up close to deal with. All right, I love them. The commandos come out. One squad immediately suppressed by the flak for lane. He's got one squad of them on prioritized vehicles, but the bazookas are put away, and so they're getting chunked down by the Panzer Grenadiers. The veteran Panzer Grenadier squads do a lot of damage. Oh, this commando squad, very, very low health, but it'll escape just barely. Well, Dalian using a machine gun AT gun to secure the south. Here so comes foot guards in on the flank. Ooh, Medtruck takes a hit from the Matilda. Foot guards suppressed by the flak for Lang. Sticky bomb hits the Matilda, but not enough to crit it. And the DAC vehicles are forced to back up as a naval warfare comes in, trying to deny the allies fuel. Oh, AT gun takes a shot in the back. Almost kills the med truck, but gets knocked out itself. Oh, triple hit Panzer Grenadier squad. Matilda shot whiff somehow. One Panzer Grenadier left, but the martyr will cover. Meanwhile, and how many kills does this sniper have? A lot. <laughs> yeah, it's 31. He's been doing work. That's good. I. You know, maybe it's outdated, but for my Co-2 days, uh, one kill per minute average for a sniper is really productive and efficient sniper play. Alright, so Sal is doing a good job forcing the allies off in the north. Both, it's telling both Matildas now in the center. AT gun gets decrewed, recon tractor at risk of going down. The martyr in the back is doing a lot of work. I wouldn't mind seeing another martyr from Travolka.
Sniper taking some fire from sappers, but the P4 is here to support, and the sappers forced to retreat. Man, these Matildas, they're very chonky. Oh my gosh, the health on that flak filling. Oh, and it does, it died. I don't even know what hit it. Oh, was it a, might have been a commandos a, rockets? A rifle shot, maybe. So another flak filling and the martyr dead as well. Matilda's both very damaged and a sapper squad goes down, but not to get the kill. So the upgraded rockets on the commando is paying dividends. Foot guards, four soft nice grenadiers in the north. Yeah, just dodge just in time. Now here's the problem, the foot guards are down to a single SMG, so they're gonna take a lot of damage from these grenadiers now. Especially with the height advantage. Here comes a grenade. Ooh, that hurts, but the foot guards are gonna get away here. Sniper chipping away at commandos. The recon tractor is still alive. And so you can see he's got the self-repair upgrade as well. Travolka does. I imagine his play now is, is essentially waiting for the tiger. But he's at least five minutes away in terms of fuel. Dak infantry trying to prevent the recovery. Oh, good use of the smoke. Great use of the smoke. To try to get that AT gun away. Oh, the AT gun does get decrewed. Rifles try to defend it with a grenade, but they're forced to retreat as well. And now Naval Warfare Barrage coming in. On the middle. It's kind of a misplaced barrage. Oh, here comes the whiz bang! Oh, no. <laughs> right on the fuel point. Med truck towing away the AT gun. Eats several rockets, but gets away. How? What? what? What did I just witness? That is the most well-armored ambulance I've ever seen. <laughs> but Dalian, thank you. Thank you for building a whiz bang. That makes me really happy. So Axis in relatively firm control of the center here. Two naval warfers, a medic bunker, a triple vet sniper. But the allies, uh, pretty good control on both of the flanks. And so allies now, uh, pretty significant VP pressure. Even though the KD, at least for the two players I have highlighted, really uh, favored the Axis. LMG commandos push back, stops trooping, yep, and they're forced to retreat. And good thing, because the sniper's about to show up. Solace just has a lot of support weapons, or support units. Two Nevels, AT gun, MG42, sniper. His main line is relatively small compared to... You know, John Diaz, I'm looking at two sections, one LMG commando, one foot guard. But I think that is, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you invest into the veteran seat like he has. The DAC is tip, like typically more mobile, more offensive. So you rely on them to push and you use the superior Wehrmacht team weapons to kind of hold the terrain. Uh, I've seen this a number of times. In fact, in a previous replay on this exact map with uh, Ares and a Hulk smash. They did kind of a similar approach. It works very well. It allows him to have a strong center core, and they're just holding on to that. And that's what he's been. He's been in this same spot. Sala says almost the entire match now. Yeah. Well, he just got his tiger out on the field. So how's that for offensive firepower? Oh man. All right, Whizbang lining up a shot here. Ooh. And it comes in, does a lot of damage, knocks out a machine gun. Axis infantry move in front of it, but it will prevent them from effectively retreating. And now, is that a 17 pounder? It sure is. 17 pounder hits the tiger and forces it to back up. Dalin okay. now getting out advanced logistics and survival training, which will help his commandos stand up Can a little bit to the Lake infantry. How? I'm wondering if that thing could hit the recon tractor if he just got sight. If he had sight. Well, oh, Medallion didn't unlock the flares. Uh, he went for the smoke instead, so they don't have that that ability available to them. Naval Warfare Barrage is coming in, targeting the AT guns. Whizbang backs up. Tiger relocating. It looks like he's going to try to push off this uh, British position here. 
It needs to be supported, though, and it, with one of those naval workers, you need to focus on that 17-pounder. Is this going to reliably penetrate the Tiger? And now, if the uh, foot guards use their special ability, now they're actually going to have to run away. Here comes the naval work for Barrage. MG42 suppresses. Tiger and Panzer IV are doing a lot of damage. So if you're... I, I don't know what John sees. Oh, John sees got 170 fuel. I wonder if you tech up for grants here. The Matildas are doing fine for right now, but now that heavy armor has hit the field, I think you need uh, you need access to those those better guns. Oh, well, Matilda hit by the Martyr in the Pack 38. Now here comes the Whiz Bang under the Pack and the Med Truck. Pack, ooh, it's gone. Oh man. Here's where you start to see the, the super heavy artillery, typical of, of team games. Naval work for counter barraging, focusing on the mortar and the 17 counter on the Brit side. Oh, that mortar's done. Yep, there it goes. And Travolka just upgraded armor reserves, so you can expect to see a DAC Tiger in a couple of minutes as well. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. He needs to get one of these Matotas out of there in exchange of Grant. Yeah, Dolly and building a Hellcat now. So, yeah, I agree. The Allies need to pivot to a, a heavy anti-armor build here. Commandos are good, especially with the survivability and the advanced logistics. Man, they still can't kill that ambulance. That is wild to me. An ambulance taking multiple bazooka shots. I but wish you go. could see how much damage a unit took Ooh. over the course of the game. Yeah, that would be cool. Soft Troop can get annihilated in the middle of the map. They dropped their MD-42 LMG, and it looks like the Panzer Grenadiers are going to pick that up. It's, I think that's the best LMG in the game. I don't remember. I know Will the Noobs did a bunch of testing. It's either that it or the Vickers K. I think they were both top two. Yeah. And you put that on a Vet 3 Pegren squad. That's a, that's a dangerous squad right there. Yeah, really good damage, but they are a little bit squishier than some of the other late game infantry. Oh! Sniper just gets annihilated between the Whizbang and the infantry. Oh, oh God. Posthumous Iron Cross for him, I guess. <laughs> Matilda's doing a lot of work. MG42 suppresses the uh, LMG commandos, but the infantry section is just going to run up and clear it. And that veteran MG42 now gone as well. And what the Axis really need is the ability to rapidly repair these tanks. They're, they're taking a lot of damage. And you can't really afford to push to them at half health. Travolka now investing in a walking Stuka, so we're not going to see a Tiger anytime soon here. A lot of artillery invested on the Axis side. Uh, they finally Chomsky retaken the South. Yeah. He's not destroying or stealing that MG42. That's uh, He had plenty of time to choose either one or the other. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That MG42, obviously the best machine gun in the game. Here you go. Oh, Panzer IV? At risk from the 17-pounder, we'll, we'll get away. And here comes the naval warfare. Gotta be on the 17-pounder. The sappers repairing take a bunch of damage. That's, I'm sorry, not the naval warfare, the walking Stuka. And they'll get out. Now here comes the naval warfare, also on the 17-pounder. We do have a bishop on the field. Hopefully to counter barrage those uh, those nebbles. Oh man! Now here comes the whiz bang. What's it going for? It's going for the naval warfers. So at that range, oh, wow. he, he got the vet ability for the long range barrages. Because that's, that's not the normal range. Yeah, and that explains why the barrage looks different. But he knocks out one of the naval warfers. Tiger here taking some damage. Uh, using the mobile repair by having the pioneers working on it. And here comes the DAC uh, loiter targeting the Vet 3 Matilda. 17 pounder cleared by the recon tractor. <laughs> John Stee walks up just to stun the Tiger as a fuck you. <laughs> Uh, Axis still hurting on VPs though. Dalian's did a good job of controlling this southern VP. 
And John C sitting on the north one with infantry. Foot guards now trying to capture the center. And unless the Axis can undo this triple cap, uh, their last 30 VPs are going to drop almost immediately. Naval Warfare coming in, targeting the 17 pounder again. Man, the Axis need to get. All right, so they're on the center and the north VP. They can't really afford to lose control again here. So you see the P4 ro rotating to the north. The Tiger is going to come here and sit on the center. Now the Bishop targeting the Naval Warfare, just like you called. All right, so Axe is settling in at 10 points here. And That's Tiger's, a lot of room to breathe. Yeah, Tiger coming out, he's going to knock out the 17-pounder, which is smart. They don't even control their own fuel right now, but I think that's the least of their worries. Travolka going for a Panzer IV assault group. They saw Grenadiers. Tiger takes a round from Matilda and shrugs it off. But the Matilda shrugs off the uh, AT gun round as well. There we go. Tiger penetrates. So I've seen this before where teams have, uh, you know, a handful of v uh, VPs left, but they take control. And if they do a good enough job of basically just holding on, uh, you can still whittle down your teammate or the other team and get a good comeback in. Let's bring in effect to try to get the tiger out. The Hellcat doing some damage. Matilda's pushing. They're not going to reliably penetrate, and this Matilda needs to back up. Ooh, eight. One Matilda gets smoked. AT gun knocks out the Hellcat. That's a really good engagement for the Axis. And now the allies at risk here. Ooh. Five commandos knocked out by a single tiger shot. And here come the foot guards. Oh my goodness. The tiger triple vet doing a ton of work. And now the Axis have the triple cap on here. Yeah, those 130 VPs are not going to last super long for the allies. Oh, MG42 cleared again. I'm wondering if I know Dalian didn't get he got the artillery on his captain. Did he get the mark target Colin on uh from the SSF battle group? No. Uh yes he does. He has that. So that might be their only chance of taking out this tiger. Well Naval Warfare comes in on the center VP and denies the recap. The Axis triple V triple cap here. Uh the Allies gotta figure this out, and they are basically all the way back in their base. They essentially have one opportunity for a good push here. You've got a Hellcat that just came out. You've got a Matilda and a Bishop and a, and a Sherman Whizbang. The problem, though, is they need to take two VPs. And the Axis are dug in at this point. All right, so here comes a Whizbang barrage on this Panzer Grenadier squad. It does a lot of damage, but I honestly think it's a little bit of a waste. I think you need to use that Whizbang to soften up defenses around a VP at this point. As much as I love seeing the rockets come in. Commandos and the Hellcat chunk away at the P4. Oh, oh, here comes the loiter. That Hellcat at risk here. But I don't know what the Axis vehicles target. Naval Warfare Barrage coming in to blunt this allied push. Panzer IV takes artillery. all the damage. Oh my Support gosh. Support weapons, this is going to be tough. Yeah. So Dalian gets on the southern VP. John C's got to get on this middle VP here. Oh, and he got off. He moved off of it. Oh, he's not even capping it. And this is it. And the Axis are going to take this one back with only 10 VPs. All right. So. Before we get into the post-match discussion, I'm going to start with a build or review here. And I'm switching it up this time because obviously with a game that goes uh, 40 minutes and down to the very last VP, you have a lot of kind of weird construction at the end where people are replacing units. So instead, I'm going to focus on the general theme of the build order for each one of these guys. So starting with the Axis and Salus with the Breakthrough Battle Group. So he has a really heavy kind of tier one opening, right? Sniper, MG42, 
Rens and the tier one vet veterancy upgrade, which is really helpful because even when his MG42 gets decrewed during the game, he recruits it immediately gets vet one. He goes tier three, uh, mainly for the support weapons. You really don't see him use it much until the late game when he gets a couple of naval warfers out, but that's his bridge to tier four. And he really pushes for that tier four end game, gets a couple of Stoss troopmen, gets a P4. And then, of course, he gets the Tiger and uses that really effectively and, uh, through the end of the game. Then uh, Travolka playing as the DAC. Um, pretty standard, light mechanized opening here going into, into tier two uh, with the fire support elements for the flak for Ling, right? A lot of crowd shoots in play and a lot of flak for Ling play. Uh, and you see him focus on maintaining that suppression. So I think he ended up with three different flak for Lings on the field. Um, only one at a time, though, as they got knocked out to replace them. Same with the crowd shoots in. What was interesting to me is instead of just going straight for tier three and the DAC tanks, he actually got uh, tier two out for the recontractor uh, and then ended up getting a martyr out as well. I think he lost one at one point and got a second one back. Uh, but that allowed him to help deal with some of the British heavy armor in the late game. And then, like I said, very late tier three compared to the other uh, players in this match. Uh, he does get the armored reserves out, doesn't use it for the Tiger, ends up using it for the, uh, the Panzer IV assault group. Um, he does get a walking Stuka for some extra artillery. The big reason I think you see his tech delayed so late, he made really heavy use of the DAC armory. Um, even by kind of the, the very early mid game, he had all three of the second row upgrades uh, done. So the, uh, the veteran squad leaders, the vehicle survivability kit and the tungsten armor, and then later the self heal. Uh, so he really focused on those upgrades, which I think uh, gave his army some viability in the late game and helped with the turnaround there at the very end. Uh, on the Allied side, John C. Pons playing as, as the Brits, the Air and Sea Battle Group. Again, pretty wide-ranging infantry start for him and relatively standard, right? Two sappers, a dingo, two infantry sections. He got a mortar and he got LMG commandos, which I assume were an attempt to kind of shore up his infantry and counterplay the sniper. They did a lot of work for him. Um, and then he pretty much jumped straight to late game armor. So he gets a, a six-pounder out and gets a crusader. And then he ends up going for a couple of Matildas and foot guards and then a 17 pounder ends up back teching for a bishop so uh the two big takeaways for him uh for you all one don't be afraid to back tech uh the bishop is really helpful late game for the brits and so it's actually not as much of a cost as you might think uh especially uh late game in a, in a team game when artillery becomes really critical at the end the other thing though i i kind of think there was an over investment into the matildas they were good when the first one hit the field. I actually think a Matilda instead of that first Crusader would have been better off because the heavy uh, AT wasn't there yet. There was no Tiger. Uh, it was a couple minutes out. I think, though, uh, at this point, especially with the way the resources were, I would prefer to see him uh, go for grants and get a couple of those out. They do better against the late game Axis armor. That P4 was a live all game. The Tiger got to vet three. Uh, and then the DAC P4 at the end of the game, the grants would have been a much better counter to that. Um, the last thing is I didn't notice him use the uh, armory upgrades for the Brits. So the infantry training, the armored vehicle training, when you need to scale into the late game, uh, and the, the team weapon training is actually really good when you're relying on machine guns and, and AT guns. Uh, scaling into the late game, those upgrades are really important. So don't forget about them uh, in the midst of the game. And then finally, getting into Dalian with the Special Operations Battle Group. So I think pretty standard opening for the Spec Ops Battle Group with the Weasel, some rifles, grenade package because he's up against the DAC player. So that helps you deal with some of their, their mechanized vehicles early. And then goes ISC. Um, interesting, I, I thought he did a good job flexing to the Weapon Support Center. Again, it's only 100 manpower, 10 fuel. So it's not as much of a back tech as you might think. I mean, it costs less than grenades. And that he used that for them three half track with the 75 mil, uh, got a, an HMG out. So that gave him some team weapon flexibility in the middle of the game and also allowed him to upgrade his Zooks later. And then in the mid game, he got some commandos out and focused a lot on upgrades to make his units uh, fare a little bit better in the fight. So BARs, improved rockets, advanced logistics, survivability. And I think you saw that. Like, I think you could feel in the game, like he was still capable of putting on quite a bit of pressure. Um, the problem, though, is with that setup in the late game, you're really relying on the stock kind of U.S. armor. And if you don't have good fuel control, you will you can start to kind of get rolled on in the back foot. You got a whiz bang out. Obviously, I love the whiz bang. Um, it can be a little RNG heavy in, in its success. 
and then the Hellcat late game. Really, when you're up against Tigers and P4s, you need a little pack of Hellcats. Uh, one's not going to do it for you. So yeah, th those are the major themes from the build order. And now we'll get into the uh, the formal post-match discussion with Garrett. Hi, right, everyone. We're back. <laughs> yeah, lots of wild moments in that game. Just stuff I couldn't believe. I mean, we saw a med truck eat a full <laughs> whizbang volley. And two uh, direct hits from bazookas that were upgraded at the WSC from the commandos. And it's still just like, eh, whatever, I'm fine. I feel like if those were like Jaeger Shreks, that thing would have been toast after one. The homing, <laughs> homing missiles. Yeah. Oh, man. So uh, we just got a couple of notes here. We're going to start uh, with the allied team, uh, John C. and Dalian, who, who really played a great game. And, you know, it's funny. We were talking about it during the cast, the risk of like you get your opponent down to a handful of VPs, but they take take back control. And with the, the faster tick rate in Co3, uh, even 100 VPs can can get away from you very quickly um so the the first thing i was thinking right the allies did a good job most of the game of taking the flank vps and holding on to them and kind of seeding the center and i think if they had maintained that approach instead of like fighting aggressively for the middle vp and trying to get the triple cap if they had just like left a matilda up in the north right throwing a hellcat uh and the whiz bang in the south with some infantry like maybe they just hold on to it and force the axis guys to kind of split split their forces and they hold on to the vps long enough to knock out that last 10 i don't know you you play uh more twos than i do garrett is there anything that you would have done to kind of turn that uh i mean i i agree with what with what you said it it's tough because you want to hold on to the middle you want to protect your teammates flank you don't want to leave them vulnerable and they did a great job at the beginning of covering the entire map. Dolly and John C. Ponce were, they were going back and forth. Uh, they had some combined pushes. Uh, that dingo was all over the field early on. Yeah, it was. And that was critical. But then at the end, they kind of got locked in because of the pressure from Travolka. D Dolly and got locked into his spot. And uh, John C. really couldn't leave him to fend for himself on that high fuel point and abandon mid. So it's tough. But at the end there, yeah, what, when... When you see those VPs get down below thirty, it's like you got to do everything you can to hold on to them. You got to call in if you if you have those bishops and whizbangs, if you have whatever call ins, call it in now on whatever VP is about to get taken, and go throw your guys on the other one to hold it. Yeah. And so I think this is it's a function of the map, right? So the way that Campbell's convoy is built, if you are at an artillery disadvantage, playing in the middle really hurts you. Because those naval warfers, they could range the entire middle of the map, but they'd have to relocate to shoot right at the flanks. Um, so when you have a bunch of team weapons line up in the middle, trying to push that middle VP, like you kind of saw the allies just slowly lost, like you lose a 17 pound or the six pounder gets decrewed, that the machine gun gets decrewed, and slowly they lose their ability to hold the middle because of all the artillery, the walking stuka, the, the double naval warfare, the recon tractor. So that's why I, I think that a little bit more of a spread approach for them might have helped them hold on uh to the end of the game but uh, they were they were both played phenomenal i mean uh oh yeah i i saw a lot of mines being placed a lot of flanks uh i saw a lot of use of smoke yeah. at very crucial times and using that to hide or be uh use it offensively we that <laughs> john Stee went through a smoke to then use a vet ability on a tiger who couldn't really see him. I, that's a great play right there. Yeah. No, lot, lots of good plays there. Um, uh, the, you kind of hinted at it, uh, you know, 30 seconds or so ago, but at the end of the game, when you, you know, the access only have 10 VPs left uh, and you need to close it out, you've got the special operations battle group with that assault operation, which allows you to decap and cap really fast. And it can be hard to coordinate even on a ranged team, but I think the only thing that would have saved them in the last 30 seconds there is if you have Dolly and saying, all right, I'm going to trigger this assault operation. You know, John Steve push, grab the North VP uh, or like push on it. I'll send scouts or engineers, or whatever to, to cap it. And then I'm going to send my force in the South and you just try to catch the axis off guard. You get a quick decap on both of those VPs. And then that's it. Like it's, it's 10 that what's every three seconds it ticks down so you have one so 
you're looking at all you have to do is hold on for 30 seconds and you you knock out your opponent's VPs. I, I don't know how you coordinate that in, you know, or communicate that clearly in like 10 seconds to your teammate because they were also running out of time. But that's the only option that I saw at the end there with how how on the back foot they were uh, to flip that one at the last second. From the from the Axis side, though, too, they both played phenomenally. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we had a couple of things here. The, one, the sniper, right? I, I know we checked it about halfway through and it was at 31 kills. Uh, it eventually died a combination of infantry and a Matilda, but like, holy cow, uh, really effective sniper play. Uh, the mobile suppression, Travolka committed to the flak for Ling, right? He had, he ended up building three of them, I think. And uh, yeah, that's, that's wild. I see a lot of players, they build one, it gets knocked out and they're like, well, all right, well, that sucks. I'll move on to the next thing. But he knew that that suppression was the key to to blunting Dalian's infantry pushes. Um, and like you said, Dalian, really sharp player, like knows how to be aggressive. So constantly running into that, that flak for and that suppression prevented him from being as offensive as I think he would have liked to be. And then and com- combined with that recon tractor mm-hmm. and the other team weapons from uh, from Solace, they, they none of them uh, none of them dug themselves into a hole by by getting out too many of one unit. They all got out a good amount of everything across the board, uh, combined arms. And, yeah. and like you were saying, uh, he did build three of those flak tracks, but they were all at different times. So he mm-hmm. never over invested in, uh, you know, that firepower he only had as much as he needed yeah and and he did a good job of using uh like i was a little confused when after he invested into fire support elements he still did tier two before he did tier three but he made great use of it right he got the recon tractor out got a couple of martyrs out right which the martyrs will reliably penetrate uh the matilda especially with the battle group upgrade and the armory upgrade uh so really smart choice there it keeps the matildas from getting too aggressive um and then when you like reinforce the armor on your med truck so that it's invulnerable uh that helps you keep your team weapons alive uh, going into the late game i don't know garrett what what else do you got uh great i saw some great movement from uh from solace he would always keep his uh his panzer four was always paired with someone, you know, a, a mm-hmm. grand squad or two or a stash squad. And that, uh, that made it very difficult to keep that Northern point. Anytime John Steve would try to push up there, he'd be going up against a P4 with combined with something else. And that's without having to, uh, move your force up there. Cause he only had, he had two Matildas, but either, either, you know, one of those isn't going to take on a P4. So he'd have to move both. And I think that's the decision. That's kind of the the battle they were fighting is what do I do with my units? Because I can't take the north with one Matilda. But if I move two up there, middle is going to be way too weak. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, Yeah. The getting that tiger up to vet three. I mean, that really helps too. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Never, never hurts. Garrett, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this one with me and, and supporting. Um, Johnsty, uh, thanks for sending this one in. This was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I can't believe you guys lost this. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for having me on. This was a that was a great match. Yeah, of course. Uh, we'll play the Travolco and Salas. Uh, and yeah, so that's all from here, and we'll see you all in the next one.